Hi, in this clip we will discuss normal random variables. So I think you've heard or you've seen this uh, bell curve. Okay, so this appears many times when uh, in in our practice when we uh, compute um, the distribution of the average samples, the average of the samples. Okay, um, this this is not a uh, coincidence that we, you can that you get this kind of bell curve. Okay, we will we'll see later on um, the reason for this, but um, um, let me remark for now that this is not a coincidence that we see so often this kind of bell curve. Okay, uh, this is the normal distribution, and it is first introduced in. Uh, 1733 by Abraham de Moreau to uh, approximate binomial random variables. Uh, if you recall that uh, basically binomial random variable looks somewhat like this, right? So, uh, however, to compute exactly this uh, distribution, you need to compute in 2k, and it's pretty hard to do with this uh, binomial coefficient. So, um, this normal distribution has been uh, developed to approximate these uh, random variables. And it is later developed by Laplace and, and some other mathematicians. And it, finally, it's, it's an, uh, the key idea in the central limit theorem that we will cover later on. Right? So uh, the standard normal random variable is, is, is this random variable that is specified by the PDF like this. So it's basically, uh, uh, if you look at this, uh, there are many facts that you can infer from, from this PDF. And, and this is clearly the bell shape thing. Okay? So uh, the first fact is that uh, if you look at this, uh, if you look at the distribution, let's go back a little bit. If you look at the distribution, you can see that you get uh, minus x squared here. So if you start from zero, it's here, right? If you start from zero, then what really matter to the uh, distribution is the uh, square of x. So going this way and that way doesn't change any, uh, doesn't have any effect. So direction from the, the zero doesn't change the effect. So therefore, it is, uh, it is symmetric around the, the zero. So you know you have fx equals f minus x. You can just plug in, right? Because you have x square here. All right. So that's the first uh, uh, observation here. Another is that uh, fx is actually the probability distribution. So to check that, first of all, you need to show that fx is larger than zero, and and the uh, integral from uh, minus in infinity to infinity of f x dx is one. Okay, um, we gonna we're not gonna do it now, but uh, let me claim first that uh, for now that it is actually one. Okay, so uh, f x is the probability uh, density function. Oh, not probability density. Sorry, density function. Okay, density function. Okay. All right. And also, you can have uh, you can define the cumulative distribution function or CDF, as we have discussed last time, as this probabilities. So to compute this, you need to take the integral from minus infinity to a. So f a is, is this, and the curve look like this. So this is the so this one is the PDF of the standard normal random variable, and this is the CDF. And you can see that it start, uh, it goes above uh, 0.5 at this point around the mean as well, because it's symmetric. Okay, so this part and this part is symmetric. Okay. All right. So um, that's the uh, basic uh, idea of the uh, bell curve. Okay. So um, we also have that the expectation is zero. Okay. See that. Um, this is the uh, uh, the definition of the expectation. Um, 
but uh, to see that this is zero is that uh, is to note that um, first of all, if you look at two two points here and here, let's say this is uh, one point five, and this is minus one point five. So the contribution of this uh, point or or not exactly point, but this slide, this small slide to the integral. If you look at this. This part, the, the, the contribution is minus something, and this part is uh, plus something, which are equal, because uh, uh, you know, so this ha this has a sign, so it's this minus 1.5, and at, at this point, it's, it's 1.5. But here, the the probability density function are, are the same, right? So they somehow, this, this slide, the average on this and that cancel out, and in the end, you get zero. So that's why you get the expected value of zero, okay? And and the variant is is one. So this will prove will prove later, uh, because it requires integration in integration by parts, okay? So that's the uh, standard um, normal distribution. However, for a random variable x, which is not this is general, so you have two parameters, okay? Two parameters. One is mu another is sigma square and so this has a pdf given by this so the the chain is this is that you have uh, some scaling factor so this is basically the variance okay so we prove later that this is actually the variance and this is uh the mean okay to see that uh basically note that mu appears here and it sort of like move move x around Okay, so instead of uh, having the curve centered around at zero, if you have this to be say minus minus two, then uh, this term becomes zero when x is two. So this, so this is two. So suppose this is two. So the curve move to this. So the average instead of zero, it moved to two. Okay, so so this is just sliding and this is scaling. Okay. So this is how it looks. So this is the standard uh, normal random variable, which is uh, uh, which has parameters zero and one. So mu is zero and sigma square is one. And this one, so we change the uh, the center a little bit. So the 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 uh, where is the center? Oh, the center is here. So it, this is with parameter 1 and uh, the variance square is 2. Okay, so um, so this is how it looks. And if you increase this value, so it's kind of moved to to uh, this point. And if you change the second term, the variance square, the variance, um, the bell curve got flattened out. Okay. So that's the uh, the definition of the normal uh, random variables. Uh, in the next clip, we'll talk about uh, how we're gonna um, use uh, the standard table to approximate the uh, the probabilities of the um, uh, random variables, uh, normal random variables. Okay, see you.